Hi everyone, it's Kirk and Michael for this week's edition of The Rundown. A little bit late, we're a little behind, it's my fault, my schedule, I apologize. We've got a lot to cover, Michael, um, a lot going on, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but before we jump into charts in, in the main topic, I, I wanted to share with all of our clients that I am, and maybe you didn't know this, but every one of you who schedules an appointment for a review with us, every year when we have your reviews, we have you fill out questionnaires and, and you guys fill in comments, concerns, thoughts, uh, anything you're confused about. And so I read every single one of those review questionnaires for, throughout the company, for every one of the advisors, every one of the clients that exist. So I can have a really good pulse on where you guys are at, what you're thinking, what you're feeling. And I know we say this a lot, Michael, but we are in the midst of maybe a recession or heading towards a recession. There's a lot of fear and panic in the, in the public and on TV. Mm-hmm. Um, we've had pretty significant market volatility, but I'm still not seeing in your comments, our clients aren't panicking. Well, I'm not seeing any panic at all from people. Which, and people are still spending freely. I don't know how many people we got retiring this summer. It's a lot of a people lot. retiring this summer, which is awesome. So, so this is working. One thing I'm starting to see more frequently, and it's not a lot, but some is people bringing up the sequence of return risk, and is that impacting us right now? Which tells us, well, we're doing our jobs, we're educating you, and that's the purpose. We go to great lengths, greater than anybody else in the country in terms of financial firms, to educate you through our rundowns, our, our TV show that we're doing every, week, every two weeks, every three weeks. And Lunch and Learns. Lunch and Learns, eight hours of education. Many of you come back every couple, three years to a class. We demand you guys to understand your plans. And we do this so that you can have a greater freedom in retirement, less anxiety and panic as these events occur. It's working but I am hearing sequence of return risk. And does it impact our plan? Which suggests to me that for some, not, it sounds like many of them are getting it, but for some people, they, we've pulled back the curtain, but they're not fully understanding what we're doing behind the scenes. They're understanding enough to be concerned, but not understanding enough to know how we are fighting that concern with their plan. So Michael, what I want to do for our homework today is I want to take people back into a plan and better understand the levers that are being pulled and have been built into their plans Mm -hmm. in anticipation of these events. Remember, and we talk about this all the time, for our clients, we are expecting these types of events, similar to what we're experiencing now, many times, multiple times throughout your 30-year retirement. So if we know something's going to happen, then we have to build into your plans the ability to pivot or have things in your plans to make you less vulnerable, which we've done. So stick around for today's homework. We are going to take you back into a plan and show you the buckets within buckets and how we're using all the different buckets at different times strategically. Yeah, and, and by the way, that's why other firms don't do this education, because 100%. for them, ignorance is bliss. If their clients don't know what's going on, if they're not checking their accounts, and they're not, then they're not calling them, it's easier for them. But they're we'd rather educate people and pull the curtain back and show them this is what's going on, and this is how we're combating it. Michael, ignorance? or lack of information and understanding creates fear and anxiety, which promotes them spending less. And the less that they spend, the more the firm makes because there's more money to be managed. Hence the the 60-40 portfolio, hence the 4% rule, all all those those things. But we're getting long. But us, max income. Spend, spend, (laughs) spend, and people don't understand why. All right, so first thing, inflation. Again, I know it's been a couple times now, we just can't avoid it. We've been doing some interviews on the news because that's all they want to talk about. And the first question that they always ask is what should seniors be investing in to fight inflation? And we've had to say, okay, stop. Like that's not how this can start because there is no silver bullet. There is no miracle solution. 
There is no investment. There is no strategy. There is no secret sauce that can magically either beat inflation on the short term or make inflation go away. That's just not how this works. It doesn't exist. So, Michael, we, we are seeing um, a high 40-year high in inflation rates. Yeah, let's, let's throw the chart up so we have the numbers here. So but, we've got... Go ahead. Go we've ahead. got inflation at a... Uh, 40 year high, we just had the, the June print was 9.1% in June. And we have not seen this rate of inflation increase since the, the late, late 70s. 70s. Yeah. So look at how rapidly that light blue line is increasing compared to the light blue line in 78 through 80. It has not happened since then. It's getting rapid and it's, it's consistently beating expectations. Well, that was my, gonna be my point. They consistently are underestimating. First it was transitory, then it was gonna be little, and it's just, they're, all of their estimates are falling short, and the Fed- On a monthly basis, every month they're underestimating. They are. It, they've been trying to thread a needle. Mm -hmm. The soft landing, which I think that soft landing may be out the door. Because yeah. they're gonna have to do some pretty significant jolts to the system to slow things down a little bit. So we talked, I think, in the last video about inflation. The Fed's goal was a soft landing. They were trying to raise rates fast enough to cool the inflation off, but not raise rates so fast that they cause a recession. Well, I think the market's calling their bluff. The yield curves are inverted. The markets are expecting a recession. And it looks like the Fed's going to raise aggressively again. And it seems like the Fed is willing to push us into a recession to cool this inflation off. Right, we're recording July 14th, and the estimates now are between three quarters of 1% to a full 1% increase. Which is, historically speaking, I mean, before this year, it was, a, it was normally a 25 basis point hike. Yeah. Now we're doing three or yes. four 25 basis point hikes all at once. Yes. It's very unusual, very rare. I think they're, they got to, they've got to do something. They got caught. And I, they feel like their reputation's on the line, so they're going to say, you know what? We're stamping this out. Recession might happen, but we're doing it. I think they, they're almost forcing a recession to slow things down. They, it almost like, they've almost conceded, that, the Fed, that we've got to do this. We can't hit, a, we can't hit that soft landing anymore. It's got to be a recession. So the buzzword you're going to hear now is no longer soft landing. Now it's going to be mild recession. And maybe, maybe we do. I, who, said, who knows? And by the way, when we talk about uh, the economy, recessions, that does not always reflect the market. In the market is a leading indicator. Mm -hmm. Some would argue that they've already priced in all of this. I'm not sure I'm in that camp. I, we don't know. Just like we didn't know with COVID and the whole economy shut down and the market's rallying to all-time highs. Right. So think back to March of 2020 when it was like the heart of the lockdowns of COVID and the market bottomed and then took off. March, April, May, the best 50 days of all time. And people could, Literally not, during lockdowns. could not connect the dots of, okay, the country is falling apart, but the market's rallying like crazy. Why is this happening? By the way, not only... It, it not, the, the economy was shut down. That means companies were not making money, mm -hmm. right? And, but yet they were rallying. Because it's forward looking. The market That's was right. looking past the pain. It was looking towards the recovery. And it more or less worked out that way. It, I, we're not suggesting that's what, what's happening here. We, nobody knows. Nobody knows. And that's why it's so important to plan ahead of time, which we'll see in the homework, not trying to adjust now, trying to Thank catch you. up and find a silver bullet for inflation or whatever it is. Which we're gonna talk about, they say there is no silver bullet, but there are some un uh, un very, very unusual things happening though this time, mm -hmm. right? There are. Where usually when we are in or near a recession, unemployment rate is much higher than it is now. The unemployment, it doesn't seem to make jive, right? Employment is, is pretty good right now. Yeah, and so the theory so far is high inflation, is going to force the Fed's hand to raise rates aggressively, going to force a recession. The next piece of this could be that recession jolts the jobs market. I'm gonna go on a limb and say it's going to. So let's throw up a chart to show where we're at currently. So currently speaking, this gray line here tracks unemployment rate. It's at about 3.6%. That is tied for a 50 year historical low with 2019. Yes. So we are, at a very low unemployment rate. We are. 
the, you, okay, so we're at low uh, uh, employment, unemployment rates, but what makes this so unique is that when we had high inflation in the 70s and 80s, we saw wages, we saw wages climbing pretty significantly, as your chart reflects, Michael. You want to walk us through that? Because that is not happening this time. So the blue line, the light blue line here is wage growth. And you can see from 71 through 81-ish, wage growth was between 6 and 9% every single year almost. Right. We now in 2021, 2022, we peaked at about 6% and now it's kind of rolling over. It is rolling over. Last employment reported a negative wage increases, negative wage increases. So these two dots don't really connect where we have very low unemployment, but now wages are coming back down. Those are two very odd things to happen. Yes. And can potentially signal companies looking forward saying, you know what, there might be a recession or we're maybe in a recession. We need to tighten the belts here. Yes, but employees, but employees think differently right now. They're behaving differently right now, aren't they? They are. This next chart blew me away when you pulled this chart. So the next three charts are all kind of connected. They're really interesting. So the first one, this shows the number of open jobs per job seeker. And it peaked at two. So right now it's at 1.9, but let's just call it two for a second. That means for every job seeker, there are two available jobs out there waiting to be filled. So, so let, let, let's pretend just the round numbers. Unemployment rates at 4%. So if 4% of our society unemployed, mm -hmm. well, not our society, but those who... People are looking for a job, job actively. 4%. And for those 4%, for every single person out there that's looking for or is unemployed, there are two jobs available for them, almost two jobs. Yes, which is, look at the, look at the chart, it's, it's historically ridiculously high. Never happened, never happened. Which takes you to the next chart, Michael, <laughs> which again suggests the employee, the, the general public, the employee thinks the labor market is so, so good right now that they can quit at all time highs. We are seeing quit rates, like you said, quit rates are at all time highs. People are saying, you know what? This job isn't letting me work from home. It's not giving me flexible hours. It's not paying me enough. Whatever the complaint is, employees are feeling very confident they can leave that job and go find a better job. They're quitting in record numbers to go find a different, hopefully for them, better job. And layoff rates are ridiculously low. Yeah, layoff rates are at, so from, 20, from 2000, 22 year lows, companies are doing anything they can do to avoid laying people off. Yeah, I think unfortunately, Michael, and I, I don't love making big predictions, but my big prediction is we're about to see the labor market flip upside down. So, Literally. so power go back to the, and I'm not uh, saying I like, I'm not giving an opinion on whether this is good or bad. I'm simply stating currently, it recent in recent time, the employer, the employee had the leverage they were in charge i'm working for home i want it I, I i want more money i'm going to change job they could mm -hmm. they could call the shots right that's about i think we're going to see unemployment go up significantly and i think this work from home stuff is going to go away so we're starting to see it in the headlines we're seeing big companies announce layoffs they're retracting hiring offers it's we're starting to see companies recognize we could have a recession looming, or we're in one already, and we need to tighten the belts and start to lay people off, to reduce wages, things like that. It can really flip the script for the job market. It's just a soon. pendulum, and, it, and, and in my opinion, always swings too far, one side or the way or the other. It's the pendulum, and, and I think it's about to just whiplash. Is that a good description? That's I fair. I'm just gonna s slingshot back. And that's what, so, that's a result of this recession, which again, working backwards, recession due to Fed raising rates due to the inflation. You're and it's all tied together. And you're going to prove that in a minute, looking at profit margins, where they historically go during recessions. And we're going to talk right. about that in a minute. But right. before we do, one of the reasons I'm, I'm stressing this pendulum swing, and we're going to see the employers have the power, layoffs increasing. One of the reasons I'm stressing this and going out on this limb to say this this ledge is that we have a lot of people, particularly in automotive, in their, our, our clients 
or people who are watching this in their late 50s and their 60s. And we've been calling for this perfect storm for a while, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you've seen your 401ks down 10, 15%. 10, 15, 20%. Or 20%. As of, depending on what employee you work for, within months, your lump sums will go down, it's 20 to 25%. Mm -hmm. That's where we're at now and it's still going. The Fed might, I mean, they're going to raise rates. It could be even worse. It could be once 25 they, to 30%. Your rates. lump sum will be worth that much less next year. Right. Right. If you don't retire and get out before the end of the summer, if your plan is, well, I'll just hang on and keep working. I, I know my lump sum's going down, but I just, I'm too afraid. I'm going to keep working. Layoffs are coming. You might not have the choice, whether it's a medical event or your employer says, you know what, you cost us twice as much as the college kid who's not as good at your job, but he is good enough to, for us to justify paying him half what you're, what you're making. And we're selling millions fewer cars. I mean, mm -hmm. anyone that went through the 2007-8 financial crisis, and I'm not suggesting it's the same, but you know that your jobs are not safe if you're in your 50s and 60s, particularly in the automotive world. Right. You experienced it. You saw people, coworkers. Don't think you're, that, that you're not vulnerable. So you got to think about these things. But sorry. Agreed. We're getting long, though. Yeah, sorry. They say. Let's jump into they say. So with all you this skip inflation talk. You want to skip in, it? That's in they say. Oh, profit margins is in, they say? Yeah. Okay, so let's with do it. all this inflation talk. Oh, yep, you're right. People are always looking for the silver bullet. I'm sure, or in this case, the golden bullet. I'm sure you've seen the commercials for the gold coins, for there's real estate, there's wine, there's artwork, invest. Oh, the, they compare their, their returns versus inflation, and then there's nine pages of, of fine text for the disclosures on how they're really manipulating the numbers. But the big one is always gold. Cryptos, but go ahead. Crypto's yeah. gotten wiped out. The big one's always gold. And there are some people who are big gold believers that hang on to it saying gold is the best way to fight inflation. Michael, they, th that, that is the playbook. It has all, this is why you bring it up, this is the playbook. So if we said to you two years ago, Michael, two years ago, we're going to see a 9.1% CPI print. We're mm -hmm. going to see significant inflation. What would the experts tell you to do? Gold, gold, gold. Okay, so if you bought gold two years ago, how is your gold performing over the last two years? So the past two years, gold is down 13%. How about the last 10 years, Michael? How's gold doing? In the past 10 years, gold is up 4%. 4%, flat, yeah. we'll call it flat. <laughs> it's flat. Your gold has done nothing for 10 years and during times of inflation, your gold has gone down. Right. So, so I guess that doesn't work. If you're owning gold, to fight inflation, if that's the purpose, it's not doing its job, not even close. For 10 years, it hasn't done a job. Right. So again, we only say this because it's a they say. This is conventional wisdoms, um, half truths, and you're seeing, I mean, you, you should run anytime like every third commercial is a gold, someone a selling gold, gold coin, silver, a silver coin, yeah. You know, or crypto now, it's crypto, right? <laughs> I mean, how's that doing during times of inflation? Sorry, sorry. So the answer for this is, so people say, okay, fine, it's not gold. What is the solution here then? It's so the same it's always been. The solution is bucket three, the growth bucket in your plan, stocks. stocks. Yes, stocks are the best long-term inflation hedge. In the short term, yes, the stock market can fall like it's falling today. But in the long term, stocks are the best inflation hedge. The reason for that is because these companies, when we see inflation, have increasing profit margins. And I'm not going to get into the political debate of if they should or shouldn't have increasing profit margins, but the fact is they do. So this chart here shows profit margins going back until 92, 30 years. This shows that profit margins are near all-time highs. Yep. So when you are buying your pair of Nikes and they're 120 bucks this year, they were 100 bucks last year. When you're going to Disney World and you paid twice as much this year as you did two years ago. When you're paying your cell phone bill to Verizon and it's 20% higher than it was two years ago, that's all frustrating, but you own those company stocks. You are benefiting in the long run from being shareholders in those companies, Michael. whether it's individual stocks or the ETFs. Michael. Over the last 60 years, stocks are averaging 11.5% per year. So, Which is beating inflation by a lot. B 
be wiping out inflation. So we're not getting in the political de debate of big bad corporations making money, but the reason you're able to retire is because big bad corporations made money and your stocks that you've invested in your 401ks, you own it all, you own Nike, you own Verizon, you own it all, it's in your ETFs, it was in your mutual funds before us. You own this stuff, that's how your, your wealth is appreciated, right? And really quickly before we move on from this chart, so the three vertical gray bars show the three yeah, recessions in the past 30 years. Very obviously, earnings margins collapse during recessions because companies can't charge as much during recessions. So again, mm. if we are either in a recession or approaching a recession, that line is going to keep coming down. That could or could not, I'm not going to make a guess, cause the stock market to fall further that will cause companies to tighten their belts on things like how much they're paying their employees. It all goes back into our original messaging on the job market and inflation. That's why inflation. we think the, the job market is gonna flip, right? It, it's got, it has to. Right. Now, Kirk mentioned earlier uh, the stocks versus cash with inflation. So yes. this chart is a really, really good chart that shows the purchasing power of cash versus money that was invested in the stock market. So if you start back in 1955, in 1955, if you had $400, that has the same purchasing power equivalent of $33 today. So that red line. So I want to say it again. So if you had $400 in 1955, what you could buy for $400, no, what $400, wait. Would what, buy in 1955. Would buy in, would only buy $33 worth of goods today. So 400 bucks in 1955 could not buy a tank of gas today. <laughs> yeah, not even close. Now, the blue line is r the same dollar invested in the stock market adjusted for inflation. So they backed inflation out of that blue line. Okay, so they didn't cherry pick, they so didn't it's, manipulate. So it's I got stock it. market growth above and beyond inflation. Got it. So that dollar invested in the stock market has more purchasing power today than it did back then if it was invested in stocks the whole time. Okay. So this is why bucket three is the long-term, bucket three stocks is the long-term inflation hedge. It's always the answer. And we've never argued, and that's why you all have bucket threes, and we've never argued it being invested in stocks, diversified, but in stocks. What we've always argued is where you take your income from. Right, during times of volatility. Right now, with the market down 20% and high inflation, you can't pull your money down 20%. And that's conventional wisdom, that's what everyone else is doing. So and you can't do that. Why don't we jump into the homework? Because that's leading us into the homework and we're almost at your 22 minute goal. Good. Okay, I'm really glad that you stuck around for the end and this is a really important homework and it's more of a summary than a homework today. Mm -hmm. Um, so for our clients, this is going to look familiar. Every one of you, our clients, has a comprehensive plan. We are going to go through this in seven to eight minutes, all right? Highlighting the most important pieces of what is happening right now or during times of volatility in how do we protect against sequence of return risk. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you're not a client, this is a quick summary. Understand that. So let's go to account one. You all have seen this sample plan before if you've been watching. Account one is money that is a non-IRA account at Fidelity. So that is our bucket three. That is in stock market risk. That is in stocks, individual bonds, and ETFs. Okay. You'll notice account one, we have $600,000 in there and we are aggressively going to be spending this money to zero within 12 years. This is a max income plan, right? We are mm -hmm. trying to spend down the account pretty aggressively for them, spending down their principal. So in those times where we're pulling money out of the stock market, we are gonna have a bucket within the third bucket that is defensive. They're gonna be short-term individual bonds, less volatility, because we know we're gonna be taking money out of it aggressively. Is so that fair? It is, and so to, to summarize quickly on account one here. So account one has roughly rounding $600,000. Let's just say to make the numbers e uh, easy, there are two accounts at Fidelity that fall within account one. There's three, but go ahead. Let's, just say, sure three. let's just say two for a second okay. for today. Go ahead. So there's two, and they each have $300,000. 
one will be invested very, very conservatively. That's the account that we're grabbing income from in the first five years. The second account is a bit more aggressive because we have a lot longer for that account to recover if we have that recession occur in years one, two, three, four, or five. I think it's a really way, great way to describe it. So no matter how many accounts you have in there, you're gonna have one really conservative account where money, the money's coming from probably for the next three to five years. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have time to recover, less market volatility. For some bucket, some people will have a moderate risk because we're taking money in years maybe three through seven or four through eight. And then money we're not touching for a long time is gonna be very aggressively invested straight stocks. And in this example, so if we're in year two of this person's plan, the market's down 20% right now, but this $87,000 we're pulling from that account is coming from the very conservative account. Correct. So that account's down 4% this year, not 20%. Perfect. So the account that is down 10 or 15% in account one here, the other account has five years to recover still, which statistics say it will by then. Right. Historical, historical, historically speaking. Great. So, so then let's skip accounts two, three, four, because we're not talking about those today. But if you go to account five, this is another thing we use to protect against sequence of return risk. Some of you, not, not a lot, but some of you early on balked at this idea of having a one by five, a two by five, five by five, whatever it is, it is insured, not exposed to any market risk that we know we can take that income from without any market volatility, any sequence of return risk. That's why account five is one of the most important pieces to this plan because moving on to account six and seven, that is insured hybrids. These are contractually guaranteed accounts, your bucket twos, that money you can never outlive. Even if the account goes to zero, it's like a pension. It goes on forever. Live to 100, that income never stops. So if you go to account six, you notice we do not start taking income from that account for seven years or until they're 70 years old or 71 years old. We have the flexibility to start that income earlier if we need or want to and it would be a little less, or we can even defer it longer if account, the other accounts perform better. We can defer it longer, and we know if we start it in year seven, no matter what the market has done, it's going to pay the $29,000 a year, Michael. And even if it runs out of money, like this is showing in, at 83 years old, that income is a pension that never stops forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And so that's how in this piece of the plan we fight sequence of returns risk. So again, you account five, that $84,000, if we have a recession in year two, has zero impact from the stock market falling 20%. Not tied to the stock market. Account six and seven, the lifetime hybrids, will pay out that income guaranteed forever whenever it makes the most sense to turn it on, whether it's a year seven, six, eight, whenever it makes the most sense. That's right. And so that's what we're doing. We can pivot, start early, defer later, but know where your income's coming from right now is going to be a very, very, very conservative, very li uh, little market fluctuation, not going to be impacted by sequence of return risk. Intentionally, it's the way we've designed it. Right, and so that's the whole point of the plan because we knew we we're gonna have a recession. We didn't know when, we didn't know what would trigger it, we didn't know how long, we don't know how long it's gonna last for, but we took precautions when we built your plan to have these safety nets in the plan for income. Michael, not, so not, not only did we know we we're gonna have a recession, we knew there's likely going to be multiple recessions right. over 30 years. Right. And that's why these these plans have been designed the way they've been designed to make sure that wherever we're taking the income from, it has less volatility or no volatility. There's one other lever that we can pull, and we have for some people, we don't do it very often, but sometimes we do, is perhaps starting Social Security, one of the Social Securities earlier mm -hmm. and reduce the amount of money we're pulling out of uh, the markets. Right. Right? Maybe we should do a whole 
Social Security rundown? Social Security should get its own show. Because I, I don't want a million people emailing. Should we start our Social Security? <laughs> we are monitoring it. We will tell you if you need to do that. Everything's working as planned. That is the purpose of this plan is to give you freedom so that you don't panic. To manage sequence of return risk. So the few people that I see in the review questionnaires that have concerns about sequence of return risk or want to better understand it, we've planned for it. We've anticipated. You're good. And if you're still worried, rewind this and watch it all over again. <laughs> Today was for you. Yes, exactly. All right, so that wraps up um, this week's edition of The Rundown. We'll be mm -hmm. more timely for our next one. We'll see you in a couple, three weeks for sure. Take care. Enjoy retirement. Thank <laughs> you.